So my client ordered this dress and I am going to be recreating it in this video. Stay tuned to see how it turns out. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Fendish here. I'm a Nigerian YouTuber based in Lagos. If you're new here, welcome. And please don't leave without subscribing, okay? And to my returning subscribers, thank you so much for coming back to watch this video. Today I'm just hyper. I don't know why. I'm just hyper. <laughs> I don't know why, but anyway, back to the gist. I am here today to recreate this dress right here. I'm going to be recreating this dress and I'm going to be showing you guys, you know, how we get on with it. Let's see if I actually do exactly as this dress has shown. <laughs> Let's see if I'm going to be able to recreate it exactly as it is. I'm going to be taking you guys along with the process as usual. So let me know in the comment section if you like this kind of content so that I can be doing more and more because you know this is all I do almost every day I'm at this. So if you love this kind of content, me showing you guys recreating styles, what I got versus what I ordered, let me know in the comment section so that I can do more 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 okay so today's video is going to be a bit different from the rest because i know i did all the last two without showing a lot of um stuff i may not be like doing a full-on it's not a full-on tutorial it's just going to be showing you guys the process that's what the purpose of this video is okay i'm not like teaching teaching but i'm just going to give you a little bit here and there about how the dress and if you have any questions that i did not address in the video you can always ask me in the comment section and i'll be i'll be sure to answer you i definitely answer all my comments so leave those comments down below if there's something that you want me to explain and i'll try to explain it there and if it calls for a video a separate tutorial video i'll be doing that okay provided you guys watch it anyway so um i've shown you guys the dress that dress is a green dress so because um, i'm making two dresses for this particular client one is a green lace as well but it's for a different style and i'm going to be showing you guys that one in another video but yeah she wanted two colors the green and this color um what is it called is it onion but it's shy in the family of purple so i'm going to be using this lace let me open it up i am going to be using this lace and I'm going to be lining it with the satin. This is lined. This is what it's going to be looking like. It's a really, really pretty lace. I also source this for my client as well. So yeah, I do that. If you have your fabric, if you don't have your fabric, I can source it for you. So yeah, this is the lace. It looks so pretty as always. And then for the peplum, I'm going to be using a scuba fabric, which is this one. You guys remember the blue dress? This was the fabric I used just like with the blue dress. You can see that it is really thick. And this is what's going to help my pe that peplum stand very well without having to iron any interfacing or anything. So for the blue dress as well, if you haven't worn that, please do well to go back to watch that video. Yeah, I didn't put any coarse hair braid on the ruffles, and I'm not, I probably won't put, uh, put that on this one. But we're still, it's a work in progress, so I may change my mind along the way. So I'm going to be using this scuba scuba fabric for the peplum. So that's that for that one and i'm going to be lining it with this cotton lining couldn't get the exact shade of um li lining just as the fabric but i got this one because it's really close lilac goes with this color very well so i'm going to be using that and of course you guys already know if you've been watching me you know that i like to use stone zip for my lace dresses and any dress dressy dress that i'm making so i'm going to be using this zip for the dress i'm going to be using this applique for the peplum area where you have the um, embellishment so i'm going to be putting it on the peplum as well and other things i'm not going to show you right here are things like interfacing that i'm going to be using on the satin and i'm going to pad the front the breast area with a wadding yeah so that's that for this dress i am going to now get on with the cutting let's see you guys on the ground i prefer to cut on the ground guys like when i'm making extra long stuff like this because it's just convenient so yeah i'm going to be moving over to the ground right now to start my cutting and yeah i'll show you guys the pattern as always okay stay tuned so i am done with my pattern right now so um from the style you can see that it's a high neck it's going to be a high neck not so so high but high neck with the width is going to be very wide so that's why i have this neckline like this and then I used a princess that for this style. I'm using a princess that. So um, what's going on here is I'm just replacing the the extra length for the side front by creating a new armhole. 
So the basic, the, the thing is to make sure that this line here, this first line here, is equal with this second line. Equal with this second line right here. So that is why I had to extend it out of the pattern and then create a new armhole. So this right here is my side front and this is my center front. I tightened the bust with by taking away three one inch on the center front and two inches on the side front. This inner one here I'm going to be using for the back. I usually draft my pattern both back and front on the same paper just when I'm doing my own work. But for tutorials I like to be separate so that it's clear and understandable. But anyway why I have all these lines going on here is that this inner line here is a one inch that I'm going to be using for the back of the blouse and then this three inches here one inch on this center front and two inches on the side front is what I'm going to be using for the front of the blouse okay so this is just a blouse we're going to be flared out towards the lower part of the blouse but I'm going to be cutting open the half length front because that's where I'm going to be inserting my my um, peplum I'm going to be inserting my peplum here on the center front so I'm going to be cutting this open so that's it for our blouse I'm going to go on now to cut this out and then cut out the back piece cut out the front piece and then start sewing and then I have my skirt pattern as well so because I didn't take the measurements myself I usually like to put elastic on the waist but I'm not going to put in a full elastic all around so this is a skirt pattern since I'm using elastic on the waist I don't have any darts but I am going to put a band in front without the elastic so the elastic is just going to be on the back side just in case measurements are not so accurate that way my client can wear her dress but I'm still going to be leaving a lot of allowance in this dress just in case it's too tight or anything the client can easily take it to a tailor and fix any tightness or loose looseness of the dress uh, I'll get on with this later
So on this one, I folded my fabric into four on the length of th uh, 30 on, on four. And after folding it, the length I had from for the square was 30 by 30 inches. So that's meaning that I folded the fabric in by the length of 60 into four. So um, I took out the top side circle of this one. I came down 18 inches for this and then the length of the peplum itself is 12 inches. I'm going to be taking in half inch at the top joining area for half inch at the joining area and also half inch at the bottom. So at the end of the day, I'm going to be having 11 inches. But I'm still going to be cutting this peplum as a high low. But I'll be doing that when I have done the part that I need. I'm going to be doing that later because the peplum is supposed to go shorter and then longer. The, one, the ones inside is actually longer than the one on top. So I'm going to be doing a high low cut with this peplum later on when I'm ready. And then I also cut this um, rectangle that I'm going to be using on the top bit of the dress. So on the, on the top bit of the blouse. So I'm going to be pleating it here. I might still reduce the wideness but I'm going to be doing that when I'm ready to place this so that I know exactly how many inches I'm going to be using but I'm going to be pleating the one going up like this then tapping it on the blouse area. So that's what I did. For this one I cut a length of 16 inches but I'm yet to determine how wide I'll do it depending on how pleated I'm going to be making it on the top side. So um done with the cutting I'm already on my machine trying to join the lace to the satin. I already ironed the interfacing as well. And yeah, I've joined this bit, the lace to the satin. So I'm doing that for all the panels of the front. And once I'm done with that, I'll start joining the blouse together. Yeah, so um usually I usually I like to top stitch that's join the lace to the satin so that it doesn't move around or doesn't kind of puff up like right now it's very flat so I don't like it so it doesn't like puff up this way but another trick I do is to use a um, hemming gum to iron this, the um, lace to the satin but I don't do it for fabrics that don't have like bold patterns like this because most times the hemming gum stains it so it's either I use like a, a glue, fabric glue to glue the lace to the satin, that's one trick, or you use hemming gum to iron it on the satin. But for this lace in particular, there's really no, I don't want to stain the lace, I don't want it to, to, to be obvious because there's not so much of a pattern on this, like there's no large pattern on the lace. So I'm just going, I just stop stitched it all around and that's what I have done for all the pieces of this blouse. So I'm going to go on to join the bits and pieces, but I'm going to be joining the front bits, um, the side front and center front of the half length front area of the blouse first, because I need to insert the peplum before attaching the lower part of the blouse for this. And if you notice on the fabric I showed you guys laid out on the floor, um, the center back on one side has like an opening on the half length front area. So I'm going to be connecting the peplum to the back just on that one side. So if you look at the style, you see that it's not a free peplum, it's just a peplum that goes from one that's on this end to the back. So that's why I have that in pieces at the back on just one side. So I'm going to go on now and I'll get back to you guys later. I'm trying to hurry up on this because I need to get this out of the way. I have another urgent dress I need to make, start working on. So yeah, I'll probably film that in another video, but let's just get on with the work. Okay, I want to work on the top bit now. So you guys remember that I cut um, a length of 16 but I hadn't decided how wide I wanted it to be but from looking at the style I'm going to be using a width, a width of 11 inches so by the time I take in the half inch here I'm going to be having 10 and a half. I'm going to go on to close the top bit and then close the side as well and then I'm going to be doing a kissing pleat on the lace for this just like this.
So this is one part of the peplum. I'm going to be cutting it in three pieces. You can see, as you can see, it's already high low. I have um, reduced the length, and also, if you notice, I have ironed down um, horse hair on the inner part so that it has this neat hem effect. I don't want to top stitch so that it looks all neat like this. So yeah, I'm going to go on to start placing the peplum. So I'm going to have three of these and I'm just going to roll it and then I'm going to stitch it on individually like this. Okay, so I'm going to get on with it and I'll show you guys the finished look. But yeah, that is it for now. So guys, I have been all over the place with this process, showing the process. But anyway, I'm right now I'm done. I'm done, done with the blouse, but I want to fix it to the lining right now. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to turn the neck area first. So this is it. So I'm going to run my stitch on half inch, notch it, and then top stitch to make it lie flat. And then I'm going to close the bottom, then close the zip area, and I'll be done with this blouse. But yeah, let's just continue with this video. done although I'm yet to fix this applique I just pinned it to look at the placement I had to improvise with this I showed you guys this earlier on so I cut I cut them individually so that I can arrange it the way I would like so I just arranged it this way and I'm going to go on to use um, glue and I'm also going to be tacking this applique down on this peplum but this is what the top is looking like right now this is the side peplum the side peplum it doesn't go all the way around so the peplum starts from one side and then goes all the way to the back one side of the back i just pinned this thing but yeah you can see that it stops at the darts just one side of the back, that back and then yeah this is what it looks like I don't know if I remember to mention that my client wanted a skirt and blouse as against the dress so this is what I have also because I'm trying to give room for her belly I didn't do exact that is why if you notice when I was cutting the pattern I flared out the top from the half length front so that it gives it that peplum like effect on it so that is why we have it like that yeah so this is underneath here so I only flared out the back, but I didn't flare out the front of this particular one.
um first of all you guys excuse my sleepy face i just woke up it's really early in the morning and also it's raining just in case you can hear the thunder storm but i need to finish this video today because i want to pack up this beauty right here i want to pack it up for delivery it's going out to the us very soon and yeah i need to make it ready available for the person who is going to be taking it and yeah i really enjoyed making the, this dress in particular like any dress that has all this kind of you know little little details i'm all for it um and i liked how i kind of you know improvised or changed my ideas as i went especially at the peplum area where i later went on to use um, um horsehair braid some people call it crinoline in nigeria yeah but yeah because um i plan to use scuba as i said because scuba stands well on its own but i still needed this peplum to stand better so i had to use um, horsehair on the um, edge edges of the peplum i hope you enjoyed watching it as well if you have any questions about the making of the dress or i didn't address this in the video leave them in the comment section and i'll probably just answer them there but if it deserves a full on video i'll make our time to like do a proper sewing tutorial okay but yeah i hope i did justice i hope what she ordered is what i gave her and um i hope it fits perfectly well because it's one thing to make a beautiful dress it's another thing for it to fit and i'm keeping my fingers crossed that the measurements were correct and yeah everybody's going to be happy at the end of the day so if you enjoyed this video and you're yet to subscribe to my channel please do well to subscribe okay turn on the post notifications for more amazing content like this and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up okay and yeah i'll see you guys in another video but until then remain fabulous as always okay bye